blood of a pirate. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Will's character arc was set up right with this first fight with Jack. When I meet a pirate. I can kill it. And even though he can't dispute that he's been engaging in a little light piracy. Bung a man from jail. Commandeer the ship of the fleet. Sail with a buccaneer crew out of Tortuga. And you're completely obsessed with treasure. It's not until Elizabeth confirms it for him that he really starts to feel it. If you hadn't betrayed me and left me to die, I would have an equal share in that curse, same as you. Silver linings? Oh, and that look on Barbosa's face. The poor man just wants an apple. Another minor detail, but having the fog and storm constantly follow the cursed ship is a nice touch. And just in case you missed it, they did in fact throw the, albeit heavy, cannonballs overboard. Stop blowing holes in my ship! Priorities? Aha, now there's a tough guy just casually walking away from the falling mast. Bloody empty! And then some generosity, which is another payoff from this earlier setup, which had been a payoff to another setup and uh, another setup. Holy freaking practical explosion. This entire set piece is phenomenal. From the chase where we get to see Elizabeth step up with some good ideas until they aren't, further proving she's got pirating in her future. It was a good plan. To the insane confrontation where the ships seem like they're gonna collide, proving Will and Elizabeth are both daft like Jack. But then we get a fantastic cannon battle where the action is taken to a whole new level of spectacle, and then finally some more intimate fighting with swords and pistols combined with Will almost drowning, trying to find the medallion, and then getting blown up. His blood runs in my veins. This is spitting image of old Bootstrap Bill. Right, but is he though? I feel like there's an Amistad joke in here since Bootstrap was in that, but I don't really want to try to get there. So let's just say that Professor Lambeau always had Will's best interest in mind, even if Will could never see it. Never would go hunting for it. It really wouldn't be a pirate movie without a walk the plank scene. It's one of those genre trope checkboxes that this movie wouldn't be complete without. I agreed she'd go free, but it was you who failed to specify when or where. <laughs> and another setup and payoff since we already saw Barbosa do this to Elizabeth. But honestly, I don't even think I'd be all that bothered since Jeffrey Rush got another chance to enunciate at me. By when or where? <laughs> Though it does seem a shame to lose something so fine, don't it, lads? So I'd be having that dress back before you got the Ooh, pirate burn. Self. For real though, Johnny Depp has a tight form. Let's talk about Jack Sparrow's scab and that it alludes to syphilis, but was really just an inside joke between Johnny and the makeup team. If you watch it throughout the movie and series, it actually gets worse. Last time, I was here a grand total of three days, all right. And the god pirate myth starts to be revealed. The most powerful thing about Captain Jack Sparrow is his name and his legend, even if it seems like I only used that for a sick segue last week. He understands and that's why he's so insistent about it. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. The rum runners use this island as a cache. They've long been out of business. Have your bloody friend Norrington to thank for that. It's more likely that rum wasn't fetching the same price, but that's exactly why George Young moved into blood. That's the secret grand adventure of the infamous Jack Sparrow. Lying on a beach drinking rum. Welcome to the Caribbean, lad. Ah, he said the thing, but it's sort of a good point. Who wouldn't want to be a pirate in the Caribbean? No, 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 I don't remember this specific part of the ride, but you know what? Even if it's deceit, it's character building and showing us that Elizabeth has more pirate in her than we realized. I know exactly what you mean, love. Mm, flirting? That signal is over a thousand feet high. The entire Royal Navy is out looking for me to but Why is the rum gone? Jack again with his priorities in order. I love weddings. Drinks all around. I know. Clap him in eyes, right? Clairvoyance. He strapped a cannon to bootstraps, bootstraps. <laughs> One of those lines that just plays over in my head occasionally. Just me? Yeah, I didn't think so. It's not possible. Not probable. Wise man linguist Captain Jack back in service. And you get to introduce yourself as Commodore. Barbosa. One of those insider moments I'm always so fond of. Now that we know most of Jack's tricks, watching Barbosa, a smart guy, be completely blown away that he got off the island again, it's like looking behind the magic curtain while everyone else is still in awe. Oh, was an exchange. You wanted me not to kill the whelp. No, 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 it's all by all means. Kill the whelp. Also, this brief acknowledgement and acceptance of his fate from Will, confirming that he really meant this. I'd die for her. Oh, good. Now, where is he? Wait to lift the curse. Until the opportune moment. Go back! Gents, take a walk! And the setup line for the trailer moment that got us all to go see this one. Yeah, alright. Coolest walk ever. Not 
every bit of CGI holds up, but they pretty quickly undo any problems with a surprisingly brutal murder scene. I know we don't see all that much, but these assassinations are no joke. I really feel like a fool. Look nice, son. Compliments. Is there hope for these two? I can't remember how it turns out for them in the sequels. You know, I think there's a thing here where the pirates who aren't afraid of getting gunpowder and sparks or smoke from the flintlocks in their eyes keep them open while firing and therefore have better aim. Ah, and our main theme is back for the most piratey of scenes in the movie. A bunch of pirates fencing in a pirate cave over pirate treasure. Jack Skellington. <laughs> and the clinking along his bones. And now slipping in and out of moonlight? Good stuff. So you might be thinking that the screams of agony from the pirates don't really make sense, and you might be right. It is actually possible that not feeling anything is sort of a loose rule. More of a guideline. I wouldn't think a curse would actually be kind enough to remove pain anyway. It's possible that Barbosa has just elevated himself to a higher plane of understanding, or maybe not. But it's also possible that getting stabbed is an annoying inconvenience during a fight. Specifically for this one, getting stabbed by your comrade would be like getting megged in soccer or dunked on in basketball. It doesn't always hurt, but we get mad. Please, I need your help, come on! Your pirates hang the code and hang the rules. Bloody pirates. <laughs> Another subversion involving Elizabeth, she just can't catch a break. Teamwork. Ingenuity. Ha, <laughs> smoke comes out of his mouth. Also, Will has come quite a long way from complaining about the rules of engagement. He cheated. And one last subversion involving Elizabeth. There's a moment where the look on Barbosa's face makes you think we're about to get a standoff where Jack has to talk his way out. Instead, a shot is fired. I feel. Ooh, and here I thought all it would take was one yellow-haired child to keep me from feeling sympathy. Barbosa is barely redeemable, but you can't help but roll a tear that he didn't even get one taste of an apple in this movie. Parlay. Hey, the rule of threes on parlay. 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 And the two greatest side characters meeting the other two greatest side characters. The High Sparrow always was kind of a jerk. Your fiancé will be wanting to know you're safe. If you were waiting for the opportune moment, that was it. Which is kind of a thing for Will. Always doing the right thing at the wrong time. <laughs> I love that it's like Jack has had his head slightly tilted in disappointment for days or weeks or however long it took to get back to Port Royal on the gallows. Impersonating a cleric of the Church of England. Reveling in one's misdeeds. Commodore. Elizabeth. Aw, he finally let her hear him say her name. I should have told you every day from the moment I met you. I love you. Also love. <laughs> Sometimes you trap a guy, sometimes you save his life. Either way, you gotta throw a sword. And last time Jack fought it, and this time he uses it to free himself. More teamwork, which is such a great culmination to their relationship. They've actually been working together for most of the movie, but it was always reluctantly on Will's side because he didn't want to be a pirate, and he didn't want to admit that his father was a pirate. Now, at the end, after accepting both those things and after building a relationship with Jack, he realizes the idea of good men and bad men is not all so cut and dry. He's a pirate and a good man. You forget your place, Turner. It's right here, between you and Jack. Oof, what a line, what a delivery. I think we've all arrived at a very special place, eh? Oh. Spiritually, ecumenically. Jack Sparrow the Christian pirate? Or is it just that he belongs to the Church of Piracy? Elizabeth, it would never have worked between us, darling. <laughs> Captain Jack never wanted to miss a chance to yuck it up. Well, nice hat. <laughs> Compliments. Remember, it's the day that you. Oh, is that intentional? Falling like that is probably the safest way, since he knows that's how Elizabeth must have fallen and survived. This is a beautiful sword. I would expect the man who made it to show the same care and devotion in every aspect of his life. Like, the Elizabeth Sword Smith comparison is odd, and I'm fairly certain he's looking past the sword at Elizabeth, but otherwise, this scene illustrates another thing I love about this movie. Even the villains are mostly likable. Norrington may be a little creepy with his age difference, but he clearly cares more about Elizabeth's happiness than his own, and that's not nothing. After all, he is a blacksmith. No. He's a pirate. Yeah, that's way worse. For the record, I literally called this when you were like 10. Yes, that's what concerns me. Also more love. Well, you were supposed to keep to the cut. We figured they were more actual guidelines. Wait, so the, so the moral of the story is that piracy is good? 
Perhaps on the rare occasion, pursuing the right course demands an act of piracy. And Barbosa was right? The code is more what you call guidelines. And you people like this movie? No wonder we were an entire generation of torrenters. Jokes aside, the movie is actually asking us to question the idea that good men strictly follow laws and whether men can not follow laws and still be good. Now, bring me that horizon. A line written by Johnny Depp himself. Greedy monkey. I take back what I said before. Also, apparently, Verbinski wasn't happy with it not being enough of a horror movie, I guess. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I'm glad I got to revisit this movie. I don't necessarily recommend this tactic. It doesn't actually work, although this is the second time I'm rewarding such behavior, but I had no idea how many people wanted this movie. It doesn't come up that much in my other video comment sections, but put you all together in one room and apparently decisions will be made. So this is the first movie chosen by fan consensus and I, I'm not regretting it. It is a great movie. It, it's a fantastic movie. Pirates was always a film I really liked, but also didn't really care about, I guess? Watching it now and realizing how strong the pacing is and how much movie is packed into two hours without ever feeling bloated or stretched out is astonishing. I'm fairly confident that this is by far the best of all the other movies, but in my head right now, I, I think I also really enjoy Dead Man's Chest. That is too bold. Bill Nye is a man to be reckoned with, so we'll have to see when we get to that one. But even if that movie ends up being flawless, it wouldn't take away from the first a perfectly well-crafted adventure film with well-thought-out and realized characters. But before we get to the characters, fun things I learned from your comments on part one. I find this awesome because I was actually going to talk about how they had to cover Johnny's tattoos with charcoal, but it even works in-universe. Another good one, curse magic will let you make sounds that would be impossible without lips. And one other that... I think you're all being a little pedantic, but it does sound like Barbosa says not rather than not. Although the meaning is really the same, or at least I always knew what he was saying. Also, one set of embedded subs says not, the other says not. I'm fine to admit that it should be not. Probably goes without saying, but the world is stunning and so lived in. Everything is so on point and perfect, it boggles the mind. The amount of practical effects and sets that were built go a long way in immersing us. The ships seem just the right amount of seaworthy until this crazy cannon battle that is still one of the best ever done. There's never a moment when I don't think I'm in English-occupied Jamaica. Port Royal goes from Caribbean dream to a dark and desolate nightmare. And there really aren't any exceptions. Will's blacksmith shop is only around for a few minutes, but you get the idea that it has a long history history that Will has been a large part in building. Not where I left you. And the way the characters fit in aesthetically is fantastic, beyond the actual characterizations. Every costume and weapon is phenomenal, the clearly defined class structure from clean, corset, and dress-wearing governor's daughters, to sharp and tidied military men, to still well put together but clearly wearing his one set of clothes blacksmiths, to... <laughs> Well, actually, he's still really well put together, but he's a filth monster who is begging us to buy that the dark lines under his eyes are soot and grime and not the expertly applied eyeliner that works so well in the cave scenes they decided to use it throughout. Tortuga is like its own study in class struggle. Wait, poverty and piracy go together? You don't say! But then you start learning about the actual characters and it all comes together perfectly. I love the two converging stories of Jack and Will. They are polar opposites at the start and they sort of cross the line to the other side by the end. Will's whole thing is that he's virtuous and follows protocol. He won't even call Elizabeth by her first name. He loses in the duel to Jack and accuses him of cheating. He cheated. And he is most definitely not a pirate. Because you're a pirate. And you want to turn by yourself, is that it? Never. Jack is obviously very different. He rescues Elizabeth and then promptly takes her hostage. He's clearly willing to cheat to beat Will in the duel, and throughout the movie, we see him weasel his way back and forth to stay alive and get the things he wants. In the long run, he is a... A good man! That's the point. But you couldn't have convinced Will that there was more than one way to be a good man. By the end, Will is a pirate and Jack has gone out of his way to save Will. They both risk the things important to themselves to save the other. It's a weird friendship, but I sort of love it. One other thing I really love about Jack is that it's clear the character was just going to be an anti-hero type, you know the kind, he doesn't really have any scruples. Pirate. But then we find out that maybe he does care about some things or people, but it's still a maybe. It was Johnny Depp that brought the crazy. It wasn't really written into the script. Johnny apparently had a bunch of ideas about the role, some including him missing a nose and being afraid of Pepper. And how about this score? Eh. The last piece I didn't draw attention to is this one.
It's another favorite of mine, violins and flutes. It's one of those soundtracks I haven't minded getting stuck in my head. And reading about who to give credit to is another example of amazing collaboration. Hans Zimmer probably deserves the most credit, he wrote most of the main melodies, but Klaus Bedelt got the actual composer credit because Zimmer was already busy with Last Samurai. Either way, it came together magically. Glad I got to do this movie, excited to watch the others. You know, as much as this is a slow year for new movies, I'm happy I have more time to look back at some great non-new movies. I refuse to call Pirates old because that would make me even older. Anyway, another week off next week, and I'm still waffling on what the next movie will be, but until then. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Savvy, 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 savvy. Savvy.